It's brutally hot right now, but we can take some comfort in knowing that it will soon be fall. And with fall will come pumpkin spice season. Pumpkin spice coffee, pumpkin spice candles, pumpkin spice cookies, pumpkin spice gasoline, pumpkin spice toilet paper. I'm sure we'll see all of that. So of course this also means 3D printing a pumpkin, or perhaps a jack-o'-lantern. Of course, pumpkins are a very organic shape, and so much of what we do in CAD is not. But as I've shown in previous videos, sometimes we can get nice flowing designs by getting free CAD to do the work for us. This is another of those times. As is often the case, when we want to do organic looking designs, we turn to the Curves Workbench. If you haven't installed it yet, I strongly advise you to go to Tools, add-on manager and install it. I'm going to create a small decorative jack-o'-lantern sized to be lit with an LED tea light. In a previous video I designed a tea light in CAD based on measurements from what I had, specifically so I could use it in projects like this to make sure everything is right. I'm going to do this design in the part workbench. This is necessary because part design often doesn't work and play well with other workbenches, and we will be relying on the Curves workbench to do some heavy lifting. Start with a sketch on the XY plane. I'll need three circles. One representing the top of the pumpkin where the stem attaches, and two outer ones representing the major and minor outer diameter of the pumpkin. Give the outer circle a diameter of 60 millimeters. To keep things parametric, name this constraint outer diameter. Next, the constraint for the minor outer diameter. I'll use a formula and set it to constraints.outerdiameter minus 4 millimeters. Constrain the inner diameter to 10 millimeters. Close the sketch. Now to take care of the segmented shell of the pumpkin. Select the outer diameter and discretize the curve. Select the discretized curve and in the data pane set the count to 8. Now rename the discretized curve to outer edge. Now select the circle for the minor diameter of the outside and once again discretize that curve. Use the formula editor to set the number to the same as the outer edge. Now change the placement angle so that the discretized points alternate along the circle. Go into placement and go to angle and in the formula editor set it to 180 divided by number. Number refers to the number of discretized points in the same object. 180 is a simplification of the equation. The actual amount that we want to shift the circle is one half of 360 divided by the number of points. This causes it to exactly alternate with the outer circle. It's much easier to enter the equation by simplifying 360 divided by 2 to 180. Now to discretize the inner diameter. Once again select the inner diameter, select discretized edge. But this time the number should be outer edge dot number times 2, since the curves from both the minor and the major diameter will all meet here in the inner diameter. Now since pumpkins are more spheroid than they are flat, select the discretized edge for the inner diameter and set position dot z to 24 millimeters, raising our points to the top of the eventual pumpkin. Now select all three discretized edges and extrude. Because we're extruding points which have no normal, select Z to tell it the direction to extrude. The 10 millimeter default is just fine. I just need lines to act as the root for a blended curve. Now I'm going to connect some of these lines using a blended curve. Note that the order that the lines are selected is important. The first one selected will become the first parameter in the data pane, and the second, of course, becomes the second set of parameters. If they're chosen consistently, I can select all of them at once and change them at the same time in the data pane. 
I want to get a good viewing angle on this so that I can select lines that are radial on the circle. If there's any twisting, the pumpkin is going to look awfully funny. I'll start here and connect to the line on the minor diameter and select Blended Curve. Now I'll move on to the next pair of lines. As we can see, they are in fact radial with no twists. Finally, a third. And this will actually be enough. On first glance, it looks like we might want to go all the way around the circle, but that's a lot of careful selecting and clicking and a lot of parameters to adjust later. But we have enough lines to loft a single segment from one crease in the pumpkin, around the rounded portion, and to the next crease. I can use a draft array to complete the shell. Just a quick look at the 90 degree top view to confirm that the lines are all nice and radial and I'll move on to adjusting the blended curves. Turn to a side view, I can tell that it's entirely not what is needed. I need the blend curves to attach at the very end of the lines and I need the blend curves where they attach to the inner ring to go in the opposite direction. This is easily enough fixed. Select all of the blend curves. Come down to the parameters of the edges. Set the parameter values to zero, meaning the very start of the line. Since all of the lines were extruded in the same direction, zero is correct everywhere. Now under edge one, I'll flip the sign of the scale to negative, causing it to go in the other direction. That's at least looking more like what we want. It's just a matter now of adjusting the strength of the scales to get a pumpkin shape. But that'll be easier once we stretch a surface over these lines so that it looks more like a shell. So I click on Loft, and I need to add the blend curves in the correct order. Fortunately, they were created in the correct order, so that'll be a simple matter of double-clicking each one to move it into the selected Profiles column. I do not want to select ruled surface. That would avoid all of the lovely organic curvature that we're actually looking for. I can't actually create a solid because it will be a surface that will later enclose a solid. Closed would try to loop the ends back around to meet, which would create an odd twisted geometry that's entirely not what we want. So just okay this and we have a nice skin stretched over the lines. It doesn't really look like much of anything yet. So we'll select this surface and select Polar Array from the Draft Workbench. Reset the center point to zero and just click OK because there's no way to enter a formula into the number field of the dialog. However, now that it's in the model tree, I can select it and come down into the data pane and under Polar Array, select the number editor for the number polar and set it to outer edge dot number. That looks like a surface we can work with, but this is either a really distorted pumpkin or a jello mold gone wrong. So I'll open the array, open the loft, and select all of the blend curves again to adjust the scale factors. I'm reducing the absolute magnitude of the first edge so that maybe it doesn't rise quite so high. That's not quite enough, so I'll come down to the second edge and I'll reduce that magnitude as well. That actually looks a lot closer to pumpkin shaped. You can always tweak it a little bit more to get whatever shape you find to be the most aesthetic. I ended up with negative 0.6 and 2 as the scale factors. So that's a good start on the shell. But now I need to plug up this hole at the top so it can be converted to a solid. In my first run through of this, I attempted to use the circle from the sketch and make a face out of it to close it. But it turned out that that was not airtight and so making the solid failed. The problem is that when a surface is lofted on curves, there are little distortions at the edge in order to accommodate the curvature. Those little distortions are barely visible, if at all, on the display, but they're enough to make the shell not airtight. 
Select the edges all the way around the circle and now create a join curve. Unfortunately, that's a problem because these segments are all part of an array, and because of some interaction that I don't fully understand, the result is a join curve containing only one of the segments. I'm going to delete that and try another approach. Select the array and go to Part, Compound, Explode Compound. This results in our exploded array held in a convenient folder. Interestingly, it also means that if I select the segments again, just like before, and join curve again, this time I end up with exactly what I was expecting. I'll hide the array for a moment so you can see it. I'm not really sure why that works and the other way doesn't, but as long as we get the result we need, all is well. But this just gives me a circle and I need a surface. There's a quick and dirty shortcut to that. Select the Join Curve and Sub-Object Shape Binder. This works because down in the data pane we see that Make Face is true for the Shape Binder. This may be an abuse of the Sub-Object Shape Binder, but it works great. Open up the Exploded Array and open up the first item in the array, or really any item, to access the original array object. Select that in the binder and click Mirror. Choose the XY plane. All the defaults are good. Since the array and the shape binder are separate pieces, this creates two mirrors, one for each. Now open the mirrors so we can access the original objects as well. Select all of it and the Parametric Solid button from the Curves Workbench. Note that the symbol for the solid in the model tree is green, meaning it succeeded. If it turns out to be brown, that means that it's actually created a merged shell rather than a solid due to some imperfection in the mating of the surfaces, preventing it from being airtight. But in this case, we're fine. If you just want a decorative pumpkin, skip to the part about adding a stem and print with sparse infill. But if you're wanting a jack-o'-lantern, this pumpkin must be hollow. Because of the interesting geometry, the simple approach of offsetting the surface and filling rather than converting to solid would likely fail. But it's useful to note there's no particular reason the thickness of the pumpkin must be uniform. Just close enough will work. Select the solid and clone it. Select the clone and go to Scale in the data pane. I'm going to scale it with all dimensions to 0 0.9. By hovering over the clone in the model tree, I can get a quick view of how it sits in the solid. It looks like the walls at some points at the top will be awfully thin and a bit fragile. I can go to View Clipping Plane and select Clipping Y to get a better view. I can see right up at the top where the indentation goes to the flat circular face, there will be a fragile ring around the flat face. The sides look like they might be a little bit thicker than I want. So I change the scaling in X and Y to 0 0.95 to make the inner cut out a little bit larger. And I'll change the scale of the Z axis to 0 0.87 to leave a little more material at the top and bottom. I'll view it the clipping plane again and, see, and this looks a lot better. No thin spots. The walls are not too thick anymore. I think this will work. Select the solid and the clone and do a boolean cut. Now we have a hollow pumpkin. I'm going to decline to model the strings and seeds inside. If you want that, buy the real thing at the grocery store. Real quick, I'm just going to make this skirt of construction lines disappear. Now it's time to carve the pumpkin. I'll go to File, Import, and bring in a step file with the tea light that I created in the last video. As expected, it starts out sitting on the XY plane, which is not quite where we need it, so I'll use Transform to move it down. To make positioning easier, I select the cut and in the view pane, set transparency to 50% temporarily. 
Now I can easily see what we're doing. I'll finish transforming the tea light. I want to position it so the bottom of the tea light is almost but not quite touching the inner wall of the pumpkin. It looks like Z equals minus 19 millimeters. That's just about right. So I'll go to a top view and I'll create a plane and I'll set it to 100 by 100 just to make sure it's large enough to cut through the pumpkin. Now transform it. Let's actually transform the plane, shall we? I'll transform the plane to cut through the pumpkin. Switching to a front view, we can just about make out the plane. I'll set it to Z equals negative 19 millimeters. Now select the cut, select the plane, and go to Part, Split, Slice Apart. This gives me the exploded slice. Hover the mouse to find that slice 1 is the one we want to keep. So I'll just make slice zero invisible for now, and we can actually look at the bottom of the pumpkin. Yes, I know normally when we carve a jack-o'-lantern, we cut the top, not the bottom. But this is, after all, a decorative item, and we have to make some concessions to the medium. I can see that we still have some overlap between the tea light and the bottom of the pumpkin, while we actually need just a little bit of clearance so that the pumpkin can slip over the tea light. At this point, the transparency is actually making things harder rather than easier. So open up slice 1, open up the slice, select the cut, and change the transparency back to 0. Since the slicing is parametric, I can now just select the plane and change the Z to negative 18 millimeters. This is starting to show the tea light a little bit better but we still have impinging just a little bit at the edges. So at negative 17 millimeters, that looks just about right. It should just fit. It's possible that in the real world, it may be necessary to file those points just a little bit, but that's easily enough accomplished in post-processing. Just to clean everything up, adjust the Z offset on the T light to make it level with the base of the jack-o'-lantern. Go to a front view. Bring it to the center, and it's looking good. Of course, it's not a jack-o'-lantern without a face. I'll create a sketch, and I'll put it on the XZ plane, and choose the section view. Now it's just a matter of drawing the face in the sketch. The polygons are helpful here. I'll go with the traditional triangles for the eyes and nose. I'm going to set them to equal size. You can do what you want here. You could even import an SVG and do a quite elaborate design. Now I'm going to drop some construction lines just so I can make everything neat. I'll use horizontal constraints to make things level. I'm going to drop in a construction line just under the nose to give me something to attach the corners of the smile to. Now I'll attach the line to the nose. I only need to attach at one point because the horizontal constraint will handle the rest. I'm going to center it on the axis so that we have some symmetry. I'll use a pair of arcs and three points to draw the mouth itself. Don't want to go too low or I'll make the base fragile. I think this should be fine. I'll make the eyes a little bit more even with a horizontal constraint across the top. And now use the polyline tool to draw in some teeth.
Just a couple of adjustments here and there. I'll close the sketch and I'll extrude it 50 millimeters just to make sure it comes out the front. And that does not look right. We've extruded lines into a surface. I see that's because I needed to trim some things and I failed to do so. Opening the sketch, I'll select the trim tool and I'm just going to nip out these extraneous lines and close the sketch again. A bit of a bug here, the extrude seems to not fully be parametric since altering the sketch did nothing. It seems stuck on extruding a line into a surface, so I'll delete the extrude and create it again. Now everything looks correct. Select the slice that is the pumpkin, select the extrude, and do a boolean cut. I'll make the tea light visible again. Looking good, but of course our pumpkin needs a stem. I'm going to use a sweep to create it. I'll start by creating a sketch on the face of the flat at the top. Put a hexagonal shape on that top. Close the sketch. Now I'll need a sweep path, so I'll just create a sketch on the XZ plane. I'm just going to tilt the jack-o'-lantern down just a bit so I can select the parts of the hexagon as external geometry. We turn to the front view and view cross-section. I'll create an arc starting at the hexagon and bring it out over the top of the jack-o'-lantern. Close the sketch. Now create a sweep of the hexagon sketch. Set the sweep path to my arc and create a solid. And there we have it. It looks pretty good. I'm going to rename the cut to Jack-O-Lantern or Jack-O-Lantern. And I'll save that as distinct from the pumpkin. That's it for today. Be sure to turn on notifications so you can see the upcoming part 2 where I convince the slicer to print the stem in green with a single filament change. And finally, the ultimate coercion, I patch the slicer. If you think you might want to print one of these for yourself, this might be a good time to order in the filament. I'm sure many filaments will work. I personally printed mine in orange and green polylight PETG. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.